Hello everyone, myself Rahul. So today I am going to solve a problem which is rate parenthesis. So the problem is very simple. Here we are given n pairs of parentheses. Write a function to generate all combinations of well-formed parentheses. So we are given a n value equal to 3. So whatever the uh, possible valid parentheses are, we have to return those parentheses uh, in the output. So n is equal to 3. So what are the possible parentheses possible? So these are the ones. So in the parentheses, we have to keep in mind the basic rule that if we are uh, like whatever the substring we can consider in that particular substring, the number of opening parentheses would always be greater or equal to the number of closing parentheses. Otherwise, the uh, substring won't be a valid one. Right, so what I mean by this is like, uh, let me give you an example. So here, suppose we are given n value equal to 3 in the problem. So n equal to 3 it means that we have to at max use or at max, I mean like we have to use 3 opening parentheses and 3 closing parentheses. Right, so suppose this is the fine, suppose one final string that uh, that is generated using these 6 uh, brackets. Right, so uh, what I meant earlier was like for a parenthesis or bracket combinations to be valid if we take any substring starting from the beginning of that particular string so this can be one substring this can be one substring and this can also be one substring right so x this is x this is y and this is z all like all the substrings, substrings are starting from the beginning of the string right so whether we take x y or z we can be pretty much sure that the number of opening parentheses would be greater or equal to the number of closing parentheses otherwise that string would itself be invalid right so this is the basic check or basic condition that we are going to use while uh, generating the solution for this problem so we have to generate all possible pairs right so if if we uh, try to solve it using recursion right so this is suppose uh, finally we have to return as we can see a list of string in java case but if it was uh, c plus plus it means we have to return a vector of strings right so we have to return a vector of strings right so we have to form strings and finally append those strings into some vector answer right so how are we going to compute that so initially like uh, what is the first uh, possible character of that particular string so it is obvious that the string has to start from the opening parenthesis right we can't start a string from the closing bracket right so once we have started from the string from the opening parenthesis what is the next possible set of values that we can insert so once we have started it with opening bracket the other possible value can be we can again create again append an opening bracket to it or the other case can be we can append a closing bracket to it right so now coming to this part here what are the possible values that we can have suppose n value was given as 3 right it means uh, 3 opening and 3 closing brackets has to be used so at this point uh, we can have another opening bracket this is also valid and at this point we can have another clo uh, closing bracket as well. This is also a valid one. Coming to this one, we can have an opening bracket, but can we have this string? No, it is not a valid string. So this is out of question for us. So we don't have to go further into the recursion call for this. Right, coming to this part of the tray, uh, string, we have already used three opening brackets, so we can't use more opening bracket now. So only possibility left with us is using the closing one, right? So yeah, that is the case. There will be no recursion further over here. Similarly, from here, what are the possible actions? We can further use an opening because that is also uh, one opening bracket is still pending with us. Like one, two and three we have to use till now. The other possibility can be we can still use a closing bracket. Right, so these are the like we still we will still go to the recursion like we keep on building the trees and finally we uh, while building this tree our motive should be 
that the number of opening brackets so let's uh, say that the number of opening brackets we are using is count one and number of closing brackets at any instance of a recursion is count two so we have to make sure that the count one is greater than or equal to count two right that's the one condition and the other condition can be would be count one should be less than equal to n similarly count two as well should be less than equal to n n is given in the question itself right so it's a very simple case of recursion how are we going to populate uh, the string value so what we can do is right so we can create one string let's call it str and we pass this string in our recursion call and in our recursion calls we will be updating this string with the brackets that we are going to append to it so i have already uh, written this code so i will try to explain what that uh, what i am trying to convey using that so this is the generate parenthesis function in c++ that we have to write and we have to return vector of strings finally right and we are given an integer n and denotes the number of parenthesis or the pairs of parenthesis that we can use so I've created one uh, str string and an add string function which is nothing but a helper function in this I'm passing n and two variables 0 and 0 0 and 0 here denotes the number of brackets opening and closing respectively that we have used till now so we have used 0 opening and 0 closing parenthesis as of now and I'm passing this string as well which I am going to modify in inside this function right so inside this we are consuming these values n count one count two and str this is the termination condition let's come to it later so the first step is if count one is less than or equal to n right so the number of opening parenthesis number of opening parenthesis which is nothing but this is less than n right so at this point i can uh, use the opening bracket so that's what i am doing I'm inserting the opening parent bracket inside this str and recursively calling uh, recursively calling the same function basically with count value plus one right count value plus one why because we have already used one opening bracket right so yeah so I'm passing all the values will be remaining same but I have updated count one is count one plus one right so initially it was 0 now it would be passing as 1 for the further recursion calls now the other possibility could have been like instead of using an opening bracket I could have used a closing parenthesis right so for that I need to first remove whatever I had inserted initially so I will pop this opening bracket so this step is going to remove this opening bracket and now I am going to check whether I can insert a closing bracket at this particular point or not how can I check that so I, as I told you initially that uh, the number of closing brackets has to be always less than or equal to the number of opening brackets so that's what I am checking like if the number of opening brackets is more than the number of closing brackets then only I will be able to insert a closing bracket otherwise that would result into an invalid string so if count one is greater than count two then only i will be inserting a closing bracket and recursively calling the same function with count value uh, count two value as count two plus one right so this was the case when count one value was less than equal less than n uh, the other case can be suppose is if count one value is equal to n which means that we have already used all the opening brackets in this scenario i'm going to test whether if we have uh, used the, all the closing parentheses or not as well so if we have not used all the closing brackets so this as if condition would be executed in this scenario so I had reached this particular scenario right so in this count one value would be 3 and count two value was 0 right so this if condition won't get executed we would reach this else if and here I check count two value which is 0 is less than n Right, so I would be going inside this recursion call over here. So to understand it better, what you can do is like you can uh, mark one comma zero over here. Like one denotes count one, and like first value denotes count one, second denotes count two. 
here it is 2 comma 0 2 opening brackets 0 means uh, 0 closing brackets here it is 1 comma 1 here it is 3 comma 0 here it is 2 comma 1 just to understand how the recursion is going right here it is uh, 2 comma 1 something like this right so it will help you understand how the recursion call is going uh, at the further steps so yeah inside this else if this condition would be executed only in this scenario right so we are pushing the closing parenthesis and recursively calling with count value count two value as <coughs> count two plus one right so coming to the termination condition when we are going to terminate it <coughs> so for the termination condition to be there we have to check basically simply that count one and count two both has to be equal to n which was provided as an input in the question itself right equal to n which means we have used n number of opening parentheses and n number of closing brackets if this is the condition so whatever value is present in my string str i just need to push into my answer vector answer dot push by str and i can return it from there right so this condition would be necessary and like otherwise we would fall into an infinite loop uh, and uh, we won't be able to populate my our answer vector <clears throat> so uh, once all the recursion calls are done we can finally return the answer this answer vector so i will run this code it's already tested but uh, yeah solution looks fine and uh, i hope the solution is clear like if you want to better understand it so as i suggested earlier like draw the recursion tree by yourself and uh, at each recursion call just mention like what will be the count one and count two value at this particular recursion call right and uh, for better understanding what you can also do is initiate one string str it will be empty initially right so at, at this step it will be this at this step the string would be this and this so I like basically just populate whatever the string value would be right so it will be depth first search as, as such actually right like we are going to the last level for a particular path and then going backtracking it and going to the uh, another part of the tree so if i explain you so we are going one level like this so once this level has been done we are going back and going to the right hand part of the tree similarly right hand part of the tree is also done we're going one step back and uh, going to this part of the tree similarly once this part of the tree is done we return from here we cover the further right part of the tree this part of the tree if you have any queries you can comment in the comment section and uh, i will see you next time with another problem thank you guys